Here we have a group of factoring questions. So we look at our first one, pretty straightforward. Our guess and check is more than acceptable with this one since we have a value of x sitting in front. We know our first two terms. If you think of the term FOIL, that tells you how you multiply two binomials together to produce the trinomial. So the F refers to multiplying the front together. So what makes X squared? But that would be X and X. Then you need two numbers to multiply together to be 36. That's your last, the last two terms. But in the middle, you have to have the outer and inner that are going to produce the 9. So you're trying to think of two numbers that multiply to be 36 and add to be 9. And we come up with 12 and 3. If this is going to multiply to be a negative 36, then one of these has to be negative. If it's going to add to be a positive 9, the larger number has to be positive. Now we can check this answer by following through with the FOIL. x times x gives us x squared. x times 12 gives us 12x. Negative 3 times x gives us negative 3x. And negative 3 times 12 gives us negative 36. Collect our like terms, and you'll see that we have what we started with. All the factoring questions you can verify through foiling them back together. Now the second one's a little bit trickier. It has a leading coefficient other than one. Guess and check can still work, but it definitely helps at times to have other options. If you find yourself just sitting there and not getting through the problem, then you want to come up with another method. Factor by grouping is a good additional option other than guess and check. So we take our 5 and the 12. What multiplies to be 60, that's 5 times 12, and adds to be negative 32? The advantage to making a table rather than just an X where we typically put these same numbers in there is that you can put down all the list of terms that come up to be 60 until you find the one that you need. So we know that it's going to be 1 and negative 60 multiplies actually negative 1 and negative 60. It's got to multiply to be a positive but it's got to add to be a negative. So negative 2 and negative 30, and there it is. There's our negative 32. They add together. So we're going to write our 5w squared. Put down your first term. Split up the 32 into negative 2w and negative 30w. Bring down your 12. I suggest to physically circle your two groups. Some people put parentheses around them, but that means something else. So physically circle them. What can you factor out of the first group? And that would just be a W. So you're left with 5W minus 2. You always bring down that sign. What can you factor out of the second group? But a 6. So bring down your negative. Factor out your 6. So 6 times 5, negative 6 and a positive 5w makes negative 30w. Negative 6 and a negative 2 makes a positive 12. Notice that inside the parentheses are exactly the same. They have to be exactly the same when you're doing factor by grouping. So you write down your w. 
and you write down the negative 6. That goes in the first set of parentheses. Then you only write your one set of parentheses again. You don't square it. That would be too many W's. So you can pause the video, go ahead and give number three a try. I'll demonstrate guess and check next with this one. Okay, we look at number three and we notice that they all have an X in it. So the first step we're gonna do is called factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor. So you need to pull that X out first. Now we have this trinomial should be factorable. Not every trinomial is factorable, but we'll see if we can make this one work. I'm going to show you or discuss and walk you through a guess and check. All right, I'll write that in here. Guess and check. The check part is what a lot of people miss on. They love to guess away and they never go back to verify if it's actually working. So we know to put our binomials together, the first two terms have to multiply together to make 2x squared. So that's going to be a 2x and an x. We need the outer and inner to produce 3, but there's a multiple ways that we could get 3. So let's come up with the last two numbers that multiply to be 9. That could be 1 and 9, that could be 3 and 3. I would always suggest to start with the ones closest to each other, like 3 and 3. A lot of times it seems to default to that. So 2 times 3, that would make 6. So that would need to be a negative 6. And when we add 3, that would be 6 and 3. That makes negative 3. Negative 6 and a positive 3 adds together to be negative 3. But when you multiply them together, 3 and negative 3, you get negative 9. Don't forget to bring down your x. There's your final answer for factoring. So go ahead, pause it, give this one a try. Here we see that the 5x times a another x would give you 5x squared. Now you got to get up to 31. So you have to multiply to be 6. So it's not going to be 3 and 2 because that's only 15. 15 plus 2x is not going to get you up to 31. So if we did 6, 6 and 1, that would be 30. This would be 1. That gives us 31. It would be a positive 6 and a positive 1. So we guessed with some numbers, and then we were checking to be sure that they balanced out. <coughs> Number 5. Number 5 is called the difference of 2 squares. The difference of two squares means that you can take the square root of the first term, you can take the square root of the second term, and there's a minus in, the, in between. That's the difference part. It's the minus of two perfect squares. Now, in addition to this being the difference of two squares, there's also a GCF in it. So you might notice it makes the problem a little bit easier later is if you can factor out that 25, it's 4 times 25 makes 100. So 4x squared minus 1 to make the 25. Now that is still the difference of 2 squares. We can take the square root of the first term to get 2x. We can take the square root of the second term to get 1. So then 2x plus 1 is the pattern for the difference of two squares. And don't forget to write down the 25.
Nice straightforward one here. When the leading coefficient is a one, it makes life a lot easier. You know that the first two terms are just x. So now you're thinking about what multiplies to be negative 56 and adds to be one. Two numbers that are one apart. That would be seven and eight multiplies to be 56. It needs to be a positive, so the eight's gotta be larger. So the seven is negative. Number seven, seven has a couple different ways that we can do it. Guess and check clearly would work. Factor by grouping would work, but that would be 25 times nine, that's 225. Then you're looking for factors of 225. So that can be a little painful. This one happens because you can take the square root of the first term and square root of the last term, you might as well look at this one as a perfect square trinomial. If we can get the middle term to come out to be negative 30, or at least 30, 30t, then we know for sure that this is a perfect square trinomial. So we're gonna look at this as 25t squared, which is 5t, the square root of nine, which is three. Now, the question is, is the middle term two times those two multiplied together? 15 times two is 30. That gives us 30t. So yes, it is. But what about the negative? The negative is going to be shown. Bring down your 5t minus your 3. And that's what makes it a perfect square trinomial. You're not allowed to distribute that 2 through. You would have to write out the binomials twice because you have it squared. If you were to check this one, you would need to say 5t minus 3 and 5t minus 3. So then when you multiply through, you get negative 15t and negative 15t and positive 9. Together that makes 25t squared, negative 30t and a positive 9. And that's what we started with. So, pause the video, give number eight a try. Eight and nine, give those a try. For number eight, you may notice that they're all even numbers. So a two would comfortably come out of all of those. Now you, you may want to use factor by grouping to do this one. So three times 20, that gives you 60. That adds to be 19. We know one and 60, two and 30, 3 and 20, and 4 and 15. 4 and 15 is the one that adds to be 19. If making your table, you go in order, you don't really have to think so much. You just do the, the different multiples individually. And if you have to use a calculator, you're just taking 60 divided by 2, and 60 divided by 3, and 60 divided by 4, and then you can write down what your quotients are. So we have the 4 and the 15. So we're going to have 3r squared. Then we bring over the 4. So plus 4r plus 15r. And then we have the 20. So we wrote the 19. We broke the 19 up as 4 plus 15. Now we circle the two groups and factor out what you can. 
I can factor out an R out of the first group. That leaves me with a 3R plus 4. Bring down my sine, which is a plus. Factor out a 5. That's going to leave me 5 times 3R to make 15, and 5 times 4 to make 20. Notice that the parentheses are exactly the same. So we have R and the 5 times 3R plus 4. And don't forget to write down your GCF. For number nine, we have 3x times x. Those multiply together to make 3x squared. Now I have to come up with 8 for these last two numbers. So maybe 4 and 3. 3 times 4. 4 times 2, actually. 4 times 3 makes 12. And 2, so 12 minus 2 is our 10. So if that was a positive 12 and a negative 2, that would give us the positive 10 in the middle. So that's our guess, and then we checked it. Right, number 10, there we are. Number 10 can be a little complicated. just because it's so simple. You're looking for a GCF, that's all we can do here. So a three goes into both of those numbers, so you can factor the three out. There's a P in both of those, so you can pull that out. You're left with six P, that would give you 18, three times six is 18, and P and P is P squared, and then negative one. You have to have the minus 1. Eleven. Eleven is the difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. Now, you might look at this and say, wait, you can't take the square root of 11. That's not a perfect square. But if you notice, this has a GCF in it. Now you're left with the difference because it's minus, and you can take the square root of Q squared. You can take the square root of 4. So you're going to have Q times Q. That's what made Q squared. 2 times 2, that's what makes 4. And for no term in the middle, these would be called conjugates of each other. You would have a negative 2q, or a negative, yes, negative 2q and a positive 2q gives you 0qs in the middle. And then you have negative 4. Number 12, here we have a 4 in every one of these, so that's z squared minus 12z plus 36. This might actually be a perfect square trinomial also, but with the numbers being so simple, we would most likely say z times z and 6 times 6, that makes 36, and it adds to be 12. They would both have to be negative to add to be negative 12, and they multiply to be a positive 36. So the best way to write that answer is z minus 6 squared. Number 13. Number 13 is also going to have a GCF in it. I notice that all these terms are divisible by 7. 7 goes into each one of those terms. And I can factor apart 
this trinomial. Two numbers that multiply to be five, but add to be six. That has to be five and one. It doesn't matter where you put the five. It could be in the second parentheses if you wish. They'd both have to be positive to make six and then to multiply to be five. And don't forget your seven out in front. Number 14, we have a GCF of X. Each term has an X in it. So when we remove the X, then we're down to this. You may notice that 2X and 2X, that multiplies to be 4. 2 times 3, that's 6. But then I don't get that other two doesn't work. So I'm trying to get to five. So it doesn't look like working with the twos is going to be beneficial for us. Because we have a three here and a two here. And if we had a six and a one, so that's not going to work out. So there's our guess. We checked it. It didn't work. So let's try 4 and 1. 4 times 2 is 8. Oh, there it is. There's 8. And then there's 3. So 8 minus 3 is going to be a positive 8. So we would need the 2 to be a positive. And a negative 3 gets us down to 5. And there's multiplying to be negative six. So you had to work with it. You couldn't get bogged down. If that method slows you down, go, or you, go ahead and use factor by grouping. Number 15. Number 15 has four terms in it. If you have four terms in it, you're gonna circle both of those sets and you're gonna try factor by grouping. So this is why we like to learn about factor by grouping, because we have to use it to solve other problems. This is a cubic. There's no GCF in this one. So we can pull out an M squared that has a 3M minus 1 would be left over. Bring down your sign. Factor out your 3. 3 times M and 3 times a negative 1. Actually, remember the parentheses have to be exactly the same. They're not exactly the same. So it's 3 times 3 makes 9. 3 times 3m and 3 times 1. Now the parentheses are exactly the same. And I get m squared plus 3 and 3m minus 1. Now we have x to the 4th. Now a lot of people get confused with x to the 4th and x squared, but there's no GCF in there. Because it's 4 and 2, it's half the size. Like if this was 6 and 3, or 10 and 5, even 20 and 10, as long as it's half the size, we can treat this as a quadratic. So what we're looking for are two numbers that multiply to be 24 and add to be 10. That's going to be 6 and 4. Positive 6 and a positive 4 multiply to be 24 and they add to be 10. Now what's going to produce our x to the fourth? x squared and x squared, when we multiply those together, we add exponents to give us x to the fourth. We multiply x squared to the six to get six x squared and four more x squared. That's how we get our 10 x squared. 
All right, 17. Now, this is the first one we've done here with 17. This is called the difference of two cubes. Difference of two cubes, and it has its own pattern. You need to know this pattern. It's not one that we can just kind of guess our way through. So we're going to take the cubed root of W cubed. We could take the cubed root of that. That's W. We're going to take the cubed root of 27, and that's 3. That's why these is a, this is the difference of two cubes, because we're taking the cube root. So it's going to be W minus 3. Whatever the sign is in the problem is a sign that it's going to be there. Square your W. Multiply the 2 together. It's your 3W. But change the sign. Make this a positive 3W. And then negative 3 squared is a positive 9. And we can finish the last question. It's factor by grouping. That gives us an x squared, which leaves us with x and 3. Bring down your sign. Factor out a 16, actually. 16 times x, 16 times 3. So your final answer is x squared plus 16 x minus 3. You do have to be careful. If this was x squared minus 16, we could factor it further, and we'd have to break that perfect square, uh, the difference of two squares apart also. And there's our factoring examples.